Hello my friends, today we are back in Luminar Neo and we are going to talk about background remover AI, not portrait background remover, just background remover. That means I will remove background from any photo and uh, that's what we will be testing today. I just so happen to have a better version of it, so let's put it to the test. When you open an image, if you want to get to your background remover, you will go into edit and you will find it under layer properties, under masking. And here is background remover AI. Now, this is one of the extensions that Luminar Neo have, and you have to purchase it in order to have it. It's not part of their, you know, normal Luminar Neo program. So how do we use this background remover AI? Well, we just click on it just like that. And then we wait for the program to analyze our image. And there you go, it made the mask, the mask is what's on red, and it selected this kitty cat absolutely perfectly. And then when you're ready to remove the background, just click on remove and the background will get removed and all we'll have left is a kitty cat on a transparent background. This checker pattern you see on the back, that just means it's transparent. So now if we want to put a different background underneath, you'll go into layers into the plus, and then you can load an image and, you know, let's see, I'll just put this one. It will make no sense, but just to show you how it works. When you bring in a layer, it comes at 50% uh, opacity. You have to increase the opacity at 100%. And now we are now seeing the kitty cat. That's because this layer is on top of the layer of the kitty cat. So we have to swap this layer, just drag and drop. And there you go. You see how perfect this selection was. I was so impressed when I saw this. Let's see if I can zoom in more. Every single hair it's selected perfectly. I am so impressed with the way the program worked on this image. Oops, I don't know why I can't select the kitty cat. There you go. It's blurry now just because I'm zoomed in a whole bunch. Let's try a different image because the program does really good in some images and then it struggles in some others but I will show you some other things you can do. Let's take this image of this mushroom. I took this image, this was a stack of 100 photos, and then I'll go to Edit, Layer Properties, Masking, and back to Background Remover AI. And this is going to be another, another one of those cases where it makes a great, great selection. So I will show you this, so just so you can see, it's not, it's not just animals, it selects pretty much anything on your image as an object. And uh, then I will show you some things where it struggles a little bit. So there you go, I found the mushroom, click remove. And there's our perfectly selected mushroom. Now let's see where it struggles a little bit. Um, let's take this one, for example. This is a very clear object, so we should have no problems, right? Let's go back into layer properties and let's go into masking and background remover AI. And then click remove. Now, as you can see, it left these little parts over here and also was not able to select the center of the donut. But we do have refinement brush just like we have with background a portrait background remover. So now in the refinement brush, if you're not familiar with this, transition is what you will draw on the edges where you wanted to tell the program to think about it. For example, on these edges, I would go with the transition brush. And then for the object is what you wanted to keep. So that would be the inside. I don't need to do that because, but I do need to go to background and tell it, hey, this one is background. So please do not keep these parts. And then let's see what it does. I need to go more with the background. And here is where, you know, Photoshop and other programs do so much better because this one is kind of struggling a little bit. You have to really take your time and go through it, but eventually you can get it to a perfect selection. So let's go to properties again. And you see, we kind of removed it. If I go over it a few more times, I can get it to be perfect. Now, in Luminar's New York's Defense, if I take the same image into, let's see, do I have it here? Let me bring it in really quick on Photoshop to show you. Photoshop pretty much has the same uh, problems. The only difference is 
Photoshop, it would, has a lot more refinement uh, tools that you can really get to a perfect selection really, really easy. So in Photoshop, if I take my object selection tool that is right here, object selection tool, and just hover over it, you see it selects the donut. And then once you select it, you click on it to select it, by the way, you just click on the mask to mask it. And you see the same problem, it did not select the middle part. But Photoshop, like I said, it does have many, many tools to refine that really, really easily. And let's go back to Luminar Neo and take another example. Let's try this image. You would think this is a very clear object on a very plain background, so should be able to pick it up really, really easy, right? So let's go back to Tools, Layer Properties, and Masking. I will go to Background Removal AI. And I would expect to have no problems on this. Now, as you can see, it did struggle. It picked up parts of the can, picked up the reflection, but it's missing big chunks of it. And, you know, it's not too bad. You can go into the refinement after you do your removal of the background, you can go into the refinement and refine those, but I feel like it should have been able to pick up that object because now we're missing big chunks. If I go to Photoshop, do I have that image open? Yes, there it is. Let's see, if I go with the object selection, just hover over it, you can see it picks up the subject with no problem. It's missing a little bit over here, but I can add that really, really easily in Photoshop. Now, let's take a different image. How about this image? Clear glass with a drink, and will it be able to remove the background on this one with just one click? Background removal AI. And it did find the glass, but it's missing the greenery there. Click remove. I wish she was a way to refine the mask before you remove the background, but it seems like you have to remove it and then you go to refinement, but now you don't see what you had before. So, you know, you have to kind of guess where my leaf was and try to get it back and then work from there. Now, with that said, it is possible to refine this mask, but you know, it's not as easy. Let's see how Photoshop will do with that image. If I go to the object selection and hover over it, you see it picks up the whole object and the leaf as well. So this one works better. Now you think that we have portrait background removal and we have object removal. Well, can you use object removal on a portrait? Let's see just that. So if I go here to edit and go to layer properties, Masking, let's take the background removal on a portrait. And as you can see, it missed big chunks of here, so it did not make a great selection on a portrait. Now, the good thing about this is that the portrait background works really well on this image. So if you try the object and it doesn't work, try the portrait on a portrait because it will get a better selection. And I don't know why it's not showing now. Let's click again, portrait. It does not show me the mask. I'm just gonna click remove, see what it does. As you can see, Luminar Neo still has a little bit of bugs going on. I've been having a trouble here and there with it, but for the portrait, it removed the background perfectly. There is not one little piece missing. Everything, it's nice, it did really good job with the hair. So no complaints there. Let's take this other image over here. And here, this is a tricky one, even though we have two clear subjects, it's because the color is very similar to background with the product. So let's see if it makes a good selection here. So I will go to Tools, Layer Property, Masking, and Background Removal AI. Also, please keep in mind, this is the beta version. I am sure they will improve it and the tool is going to work better and better as they work on it. And here it made a horrible selection. It's missing big chunks of the cans. 
and also was not able to select them from the background. If I remove the background, you will see it is not a good selection. But again, like I said before, you do have the option and going in and refining it. Now, would Photoshop be able to select from such an image? Let's see, do I even have that image in here? Now, Photoshop, if I just hover over the subject, you can see it selects them and it's not missing chunks. I can go on the reflection as well and select them and this does a better job. Now, let me show you why this background remover is important, even if you don't do composites. This extension can really help you edit your images. And this is how I would use it in a real life situation. I have this image of this mushroom. What I would do here, I would just click D to duplicate the layer. So now we have the two layers, basically the same layer just duplicated. And then on the top layer, I will go to layer properties, masking, and I will remove the background. So then by removing the background, I will only keep the subject on my top layer. That means on the background layer, on the bottom layer, I can mess with the background and adjust the colors or blurriness or whatever I want the way I want it to look. So let's remove the background on the top layer. There you go. So if I hide the bottom layer, you see we have just the mushroom on the top layer. I'm going to show layer again. So now with the background layer selected, I can do all sorts of things. For example, I can go to develop and I can increase the exposure if I think it's too dark. And you see it's not lightening the mushroom. It only lightens the background because I can work on the background and the subject separately. So I can increase the exposure. I can go to color. I can cool it down if I want, you know, mess with the white balance. I can warm it up. I can reduce the saturation if I want the mushroom to really stand out. I can, whatever edits you want to do on your background, you can work on it separately from the subject. And this is where I think this extension shines and it really helps you edit your images. I don't do a lot of compositing, but pretty much every time I edit an image, I try to separate my subject from the background so I can work on them separately. Now, is it worth buying this extension? Well, that is up to you. If this is the only program you're using, if Luminar Neo is your only program you're using to edit your images, then I think it's an absolute must because it will give you so much more power into editing your images. If you also have Lightroom or Photoshop, well then I'd say you probably don't need it because Photoshop and Lightroom has better object selection tools and a lot easier to use. I hope this was um, helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.